The United States Navy operates 11 large deck aircraft carriers that are the centerpiece of America's maritime force structure and war fighting strategy. Each carrier hosts a wing of over 75 aircraft, which, if necessary, can be launched at the rate of one every 30 seconds. The Navy believes that by the end of the current decade, a typical carrier air wing will be able to precisely target over a thousand separate aim points many hundreds of miles from the carrier in a single day. No other country in the world possesses such a capability. Aircraft carriers are the most visible expression of America's will to shape global politics and discourage aggression. But it is precisely the visibility and capability of these vast warships which displace 97,000 tons, carry nearly 6,000 personnel, and have flight decks measuring in excess of 4 acres that periodically lead to debate about their survivability. In this video, we are going to take a look at 10 reasons why these aircraft carriers are almost impossible to sink. The U.S. Navy's greatest carriers are the Nimitz-class and Gerald R. Ford-class. The Nimitz-class carriers have sailed since 1975 and are currently the second biggest carriers worldwide. It only falls short of the Gerald R. Ford-class that holds the record for the biggest aircraft carrier in 2021. It is capable of carrying over 75 aircraft and is powered by one Bechtel A1B reactor. The Gerald R. Ford class carrier is the worthy subsector of the Nimitz class. Its single reactor is more convenient and powerful, and the vessel is equipped with advanced systems and an array of modern features. Let's start with the first reason these carriers are nearly impossible to sink. In addition to being over 1,000 feet long, they are as tall as a major office building, with 25 decks and flight decks measuring over 4 square acres. Because of their vast size, U.S. aircraft carriers have thousands of spaces and hundreds of watertight compartments. But if one of the spaces were to become damaged and deemed out of action, it can be sealed off and the carrier can still fight on. The next reason is that they also have thousands of tons of armoring and redundancy built into major onboard systems such as electrical wiring. So, that one weapon that might penetrate a layered defense is not likely to do great damage to the carrier. The vessel won't sink and the crew will probably be able to work around whatever damage is incurred to continue performing their mission. The size of the carrier that some people fear makes it vulnerable to attack actually makes it more resilient than any other warship. Our third reason why it would be pretty difficult to sink these carriers is down to the aircraft they carry one of them being the F-18 Super Hornet. The carrier could have up to 50 of these multi-role attack and fighter aircraft on board. These aircraft are capable of combating targets in the air and on the ground. Their speed and agility makes them capable of shaking off most enemy aircraft. Alongside the F-18 is the EA-18 Growler, which gives us the fourth reason on our list. The Electronic Warfare Aircraft Growler is a specialized version of the two-seat FA-18F Super Hornet. This aircraft is fitted with an electronic warfare suite that is able to provide detection and jamming against all known surface-to-air threats. It also has an interference cancellation system that allows voice communication while jamming enemy communications. In addition to the radar warning and jamming equipment, the Growler possesses a communications receiver and jamming system that provides suppression and electronic attack against airborne communication threats. The third type of aircraft on board the carrier is the fifth reason on our list, the E-2D Hawkeye. This aircraft is the most advanced and top secret aircraft on board the carrier. This all-weather tactical early warning aircraft is very distinctive due to the huge radar dome on its back. It provides expanded situational awareness, especially in the area of information operations, where it is responsible for battle management and air and missile defense. The Advanced Hawkeye is the first aircraft in the missile defense network able to detect a cruise missile launch from a ground-based mobile platform. Simultaneously, collaborating with satellite intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance assets, the Advanced Hawkeye will direct unmanned aerial vehicles to locate and identify the missile launch platform 
This is just one of this aircraft's many talents. Should an enemy get through these barriers, our sixth reason should keep them at bay. The Navy's Carrier Strike Group. Such groups contain an aircraft carrier and usually a cruiser, a bunch of destroyers and frigates, a submarine and other auxiliary ships. The Carrier Strike Group is one of the most powerful naval fleet compositions that operates in the 21st century. These escorts to the carrier act as a barrier in order to stop the likes of bullets or missiles from getting through. That is, of course, if they manage to get that far. Carrier strike groups arrange their defensive perimeters in layers that reach out hundreds of miles, so that an enemy seeking to get within targeting range must overcome multiple hurdles. That applies to hostile missiles, manned aircraft, submarines, or any other potentially threatening system. The virtue of layered defense is that no layer needs to be perfect to protect the carrier. The seventh reason on our list is the speed in which these carriers can move. Because they can sustain speeds of 35 miles per hour, the Nimitz-class carriers can move to anywhere within a 700 square mile area within 30 minutes. After 90 minutes, that area grows to over 6,000 square miles. So, finding a carrier is not the same thing for enemies as successfully targeting it. By the time their weapons arrive, it will likely be gone. Even if an enemy were to get through all other barriers, the eighth reason why it would be difficult to sink these aircraft carriers would be its own advanced defense systems. In addition to the aircraft carried on board, the ships carry defensive equipment for use against missiles and hostile aircraft. These consist of either three or four NATO RIM-7 Sea Sparrow missile launchers designed for defense against aircraft and anti-ship missiles, as well as either three or four 20mm Phalanx CIWS missile defense cannons. The other countermeasures the ships use are four Sipican Super Rapid Bloom Offboard Chaff 6 Barrel MK36 decoy launchers, which deploy infrared flare and chaff to disrupt the sensors of incoming missiles, an SSTDS torpedo defense system, and an ANSLQ 25 Nixie torpedo countermeasures system. The carriers also use ANSLQ 32 radar jamming and deception systems to detect and disrupt hostile radar signals in addition to the electronic warfare capabilities of some of the aircraft on board. For our ninth reason, we need to turn to Link 16. This is a standardized communication system for transmitting and exchanging real time tactical data using links between network participants. It also uses time division multiple access to provide multiple simultaneous communication paths through different nets. This is a system used by the US and NATO units and is a highly secure way to share information. This means the aircraft carrier is able to link with its strike force plus any other units it wishes to, without the interference of enemies trying to intercept, and all this would be done in real time. And if that wasn't secure enough, our number 10 reason on the list really ramps up the security. A sensitive compartmentalized information facility, or better known as SCIF. On board every carrier is an SCIF, an area where all top secret information is kept. Access to SCIFs is normally limited to those individuals with appropriate security clearances. All of the activity and conversation inside the SCIF is restricted from public disclosure. These areas are particularly useful on board a carrier as the information being received could be involving an attack or any kind of danger to the ship. This allows them to have the heads up, giving them time to decide the best course of action. On April 19, 2005, the already decommissioned USS America was towed to the Atlantic from Philadelphia to participate in the exercise Sink X, the exercise specially designed to sink her. The Navy squadrons used her as target practice. USS America managed to stay afloat after four straight weeks of constant bombardment by US Navy surface ship squadrons. In the end, when the Navy really wants to sink her, they even need to board her to put explosives on her hull to make her sink because external explosions from weapons could not sink her. What do you think of the US Navy aircraft carriers? Let us know in the comments and please like this video if you've enjoyed it.